Rich, let's get into it. Rich is our chief strategy officer. He innovates. He loves this stuff. He's been at Cardinal for a decade and marketing for almost 20 years. That's, man, I won't date him. Man, I'm starting to date us, Rich. All right, let's click yeah, into here a little bit and talk to Jenna. It's okay. We need to stop saying how long we've been around. It's obvious when yeah. you see that we have to wear hats to cover up our bald spots. Just mine. Yours is beautiful. Um, okay, what are we talking about today? We're talking about AI, and I feel like it is such a hot topic for healthcare marketers, but just everybody, right? And it's about time that we really got on and talked about this topic because we leverage it a huge amount inside the agency uh, to make our lives better, to you know, make our marketing more effective, to make testing uh, faster uh, so we can derive better results and insights for our clients quicker. So it's something that we, we embrace with some caveats. And we're going to talk about some awesome use cases today. Um, we're also going to talk about some, some pitfalls and some or potential pitfalls that you should avoid when leveraging AI. So yeah, it was, it's going to be quick, but hopefully we'll, we'll hit on a couple of key insights that you guys can take away and um, start to implement yourselves in, in, your own, in your own world. Sounds good. Let's get to uh, topics for today. Please click through. And guys, this is not going to be a, your standard chat GPT. A, like we're way beyond on that. Everybody knows about chat GPT and that it can provide great frameworks for talking what topics and blogs and stuff. We've moved beyond that. The LLMs have moved beyond that. We're going to talk about cool stuff, audio, visual, um, how we can um, not just form better content, but have it resonate better through user centric messaging. Um, and testing, getting you know, brand firms are in trouble because a lot of the focus group stuff now can be uh, can be outsourced through AI, and some of the stuff is very good. And then, guys, for any of y'all running your actual advertising in house, Rich has some really cool stuff that he does with our media team, very advanced uh, with forecasting, etc. So that last part's going to be really cool. It's only in 27 minutes. Let's get through to some of the generic. Um, these are some of the AI pieces we know about, guys. Garbage in, garbage out. Y'all know this. The AI. I've always, I, tell, I tell everybody this, the robots aren't gonna take our jobs. The humans that know how to use the robots are gonna take our jobs. And that's where we're at. I think AI five to 10 years, it can do the thinking. It can't quite do the thinking yet. Thank God, it relies on us giving it the right input. So it's still the most important part. And you guys have messed around with ChatGPT GP, GP, for the last year. So you know that all of these different formats and all these different language models and AI tools, they still require great input. That has not changed. They require great input. And then you can take that input and port it over to another one. So that's the most important part of AI. It can't do the thinking for you. It requires that. And then it can do the export from a good input after that. Uh, Rich, click through to this next one. This is some of the cool... Um, so y'all know the stuff on the left, everybody's been using that for over a year. Y'all know how all of that works. I won't touch on that, but it, some of it can be better utilized video and audio. We use, this is cool for all of you in-house marketers speak. So we will upload, all of us are starting to do a lot more video content. We found speak AI really useful. We will upload the video into there and then it gives us the summary of the video and it gives you the clips and when to cut it and what the headlines and the tags are uh, from those videos. So it like gives you your social snippets. It does the thinking for you. You don't have to watch the whole video. You're like, this part was really good when you, the provider talked about the different uh, procedure that you can go through. So that's really cool. Opus AI, this is really cool. It's text to video. And guys, you have to be careful with some of this for HIPAA combined, but it can provide yeah. great frameworks and snippets for some videos you can use. But Opus is really cool. And we have several clients already utilizing that. Data analysis on the right. What do you see over there, Rich? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things, right? I mean, I think I remember when my mind was blown with Power BI when you could start to ask it questions of data and it was an early adopter of AI. And obviously we know Microsoft who runs Power BI has that strong relationship with OpenAI. Obviously ChatGPT is probably the AI solution that most people are familiar with. So, you know, the fact that you can you can ask the AI data questions and it will return answers, it will, it will hone the visualizations based on the questions that you ask it of the data. Um, that's actually been around for a, for a couple of years, but the speed of a, that AI moves, it's just getting so much more sophisticated. Now you can ask really deep and complex data questions, which obviously in a previous life, you'd be hiring an analyst to do, or you need to have a data science team. And so there's just a ton of opportunity there on the, on the data analysis side. We also see really cool functionality from, from companies like Lion and Patient Prism on the, on the lead tracking side, where they're using AI to listen to calls. Um, HIPAA in a HIPAA compliant way, right, for our healthcare marketing friends and determine what the outcomes of those calls are. 
again, so much legwork saved from having someone having to manually go through, listen to all those calls, tag them. So in terms of man hours saved, it's, it's a huge, huge advantage to, to leverage AI. A um, couple other more super cool use cases, Alex alluded to, to them earlier, but user research. So there's a, a cool company that we've been playing around with called Synthetic Users, which we'll get into a little bit here, that actually creates these, these AI users based on target ICP information, ideal customer profile information that you put in. So, you know, you, you, you tell the platform, hey, this is my target persona, um, and it will AI generate those personas, those users, and then you can ask them questions like you would ask a focus group um, in person, right? You can, add, you can do qualitative interviews, you can do quantitative surveys, all that stuff that, again, used to be incredibly laborious, you can now ask and, uh, and, and set up in a matter of minutes. And we've done this for a couple of clients. We've done this for Cardinal ourselves as well. And we've actually felt like the results that we've got back from this have been pretty on point with the knowns that we have from actual focus groups that we've done ourselves and that our clients have done. The, you know, the actual outputs have been very similar. So we feel pretty good about this. And, and obviously that's going to allow smaller clients, clients who don't have massive marketing teams to do more in-depth research in a much quicker way. Um, and, an, and at a much lower cost because user research typically is quite expensive. So very exciting to you know get more insight there um, in a quicker way. Rich, and, I had a I, I had a thought this morning. Can anyone use all these tools we're talking about, or do you have to go and find someone that loves AI and knows how to do AI, or anybody can learn some of this stuff? And we have to. I think it's a bit of both depending on the use case um, and depending on the tech that you're stitching together, right? So, so like synthetic users, ChatGPT, Jasper, these more single use application AI tools, anybody can use them, right? Because it's, it's pretty straightforward. As long as you know what you're trying to get out and you're very clear on that, anyone can use them. For stuff like that we're doing with forecasting with like Vertex, where we're building forecasting models using Vertex machine learning, you, you do have to be a little bit more technical to train that model in the correct way to get the right output, to actually compare it to actuals and make sure that the outputs are within the margin of error that you like. So again, it's gonna depend on the application. Some tools really easy to use off the shelf and you can just leverage AI for it and it's, and it's great. Others, you might need to find a specialist who can help guide you through it and make sure that you're getting the use case. But even in those instances, Alex, it's still going to be way cheaper and way faster for a specialist to use that AI than to do it the old fashioned yep. way from scratch, where it's just all man hours. Yep, that makes sense. All right, let's show the actual use cases. It's exciting. Yeah, so let me talk about, and I'm just going to move my, uh, my Zoom here real quick so I can see all the slides. Let's talk about user research um, sentiment analysis. So this is something that, you know, with where search is going, where paid media is going, where full funnel activation is going, messaging is becoming more and more important. Understanding the patient is becoming more and more important. The patient journey is getting more and more complex, right? But obviously a lot of, a lot of clients that we work with and a lot of just healthcare clients out there they may have small marketing teams. And again, as I mentioned, they might not have the time or the bandwidth to do in-depth surveys or patient um, interviews to really understand or provider interviews to really understand stakeholders and their needs. So user research through synthetic users is, is a great opportunity. The platform is pretty easy to get set up and get started with. You, you log in and I think it costs about a hundred bucks a month for a pretty basic subscription that will get you access to both surveys and interviews. And then you can start to create, like I said, use, use your customer personas, create these personas, and then you can start immediately doing qualitative interview questions with, with those personas to do things like concept testing, uh, problem feedback, uh, problem solution uh, engineering, uh, surveys to get quantitative information back, um, and these AI generated results are happening in minutes, right? So it's a very, very quick way to get really detailed insights of how your ICP is thinking um, and what matters most to them. And then the beauty of this, right, is that it gives you outputs that you can then very quickly test in your marketing approach, right? So the, this qualitative interview um, surfaced these three insights, 
I'm going to go away and I'm, I'm going to actually use AI to generate messaging to talk to these three insights, put it into market, test those messaging concepts, see if it worked. If it doesn't work, then I can go back to my users, ask them more questions, probe, ask them more detailed questions, um, see where I may have missed on a particular insight that I gathered, uh, refine from there, and then again, use AI tools further down the road to do more testing um, and, and see if that really resonates better. So you can use a combination of these AI tools. And a lot of what we're talking about today is a combination of AI tools to really quickly understand what your patients need, get the right messaging generated and variations of that messaging, get it in front of your patients, test it, and then find out what works and what doesn't. Um, another really cool use of user research with AI is doing voice of the customer analyses. So you guys may have done review mining before, looked at things like Google reviews, um, app reviews, if you guys have healthcare apps, um, you may have looked at Trustpilot and you may have sifted through thousands of reviews to try and get a sense of what your patients are looking for, what matters to them, what doesn't matter for them. Um, you may have used expensive sentiment analysis tools that automate some of this stuff for you or give you, you know, keyword clouds and, and relatively low level insights to try and understand what matters to your patients. Well, now using AI, you can generate sentiment analysis and do voice of the customer data analysis very, very quickly. And we use Vertex, which is Google's AI to achieve this. And essentially what, you know, this is an example of what we did. I did this, um, I did this for Talkspace, a behavioral health brand um, that we don't work with, but just to show you guys an example, um, we use a tool called Outscraper that allows us to scrape thousands of reviews in seconds from a multiple uh, variety of different sources. So Google My Business, uh, App Store, Yelp, Health Grades, SockDoc, you name it, we can scrape reviews from it. And then we can use Vertex's AI language learning model to quickly summarize those reviews, right? We can literally just take a thousand reviews, dump it into Vertex, and then ask it questions, ask prompts on those on that review data and say, you know, what do people think of Talkspace? What do they really love about Talkspace? What do they not like about Talkspace? And it will tell us, you know, the percentage of reviews that were positive, what people like and what they did not like. And this really helps to challenge our assumptions or validate the assumptions that we're making as marketers, right? The, the interesting thing about this review was that therapist fit was the most important factor for all the reviewers that we looked at for the thousand reviews. I think a lot of the time in behavioral health, we think insurance and affordability is the most important factor. What these reviews said was something different, right? It's like, I have to find the right person that I can talk to and a lot of the negative reviews were the fact that the therapists weren't good enough, they weren't the right fit, they were not, you know, they weren't trained enough, they were not experienced, they didn't answer the texts, they didn't answer the messages. So actually the majority of the chatter was around the quality of the therapists and the therapy, more so than on affordability or the convenience, which is a lot of the things that Talkspace positions itself on. So again, you can challenge your assumptions, you can get really deep insights, and from start to finish, this took about 10 minutes to scrape all the reviews, throw it into the learning model, especially if you've already got the prompts written and you know what you're going to ask, you know, you, you know what you're going to query against that data set. Very, very quick to get this information. And once you've done it once, you can just rinse and repeat. Every three months, you can see, are the needs of my patients changing? Are the attitudes of my patients changing? So you can really figure that out quickly. Again, this would have taken a long time to do in, in a free AI world. Okay, let's talk a little bit about copy creation. This is, this is an AI generated image. I think messaging and copy creation is a, obviously an area that a lot of agencies and marketers have already adopted um, in terms of AI usage. I think you often get people say that they are disappointed with the output and it's really clear to understand that AI is not a pocket-sized Don Draper, right? Like you did not, the supercomputer is not going to be, you know, this brilliant creative mind that is going to come in and revolutionize your positioning. It is going to allow you to do some things that were previously laborious that will help you to create a testing engine to understand what messaging works 
and to create a, a copy generation engine that is much faster than manually coming up with all these copy concepts yourself, right? So you still have to have the right inputs to Alex's point earlier, garbage in, garbage out. So giving the AI as much information as you can in terms of prompts, right? Who is your customer persona? What are their needs? What is your brand's unique positioning? Um, what are all the value props that you're trying to convey? What is the motivation that your, your end patient has? If you can give it all this insight, then you can use it to help you really create copy variations very fast, to test different messaging approaches, which we'll talk about here in a second, to create thematic ads, right? Um, so, you know, I've, I've got an ad group that, that is talking about psychiatry. I've got an ad group that's talking about therapy. I've got an ad group that's talking about depression. I want you to create variants very quickly of those different ad groups and generate copy variants for, you know, better relevance and quality score. You can use it for that. Um, it can be a great jumping off point. Oftentimes you'll generate 15 headlines and three or four of them will be good and 11 or 12 of them will be terrible, but you can use those three that are good as a jumping off point and then you can, and then you can build on that, right? So instead of starting from a blank canvas and having writer's block, you can just set it off pull out what's good, and then you can iterate from there. And then another thing that AI is good for is it can read web pages now. So with ChatGPT4, it's got access to the internet, it can read web pages. So you can, you can help create free click and post click consistency by saying, take a look at this landing page, now write some ad copy based off this landing page. What is this landing page emphasizing in terms of the messaging? Write copy to match that, which sounds obvious, but a lot of times with our clients, we'll, we'll get you know, their ad copy and it won't match what's on the landing page, right? There will not be consistency there. And of course you can do it the other way around. You can have some great performing ad copy and then you can say, write me a landing page that matches this ad copy and reflects some of these same USBs. So real quick, because I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, one of the tools that we use uh, for patient-centric messaging is AnyWord. It is built specifically to, I mean, you can generate landing page copy, but it's really built for digital ad copy. So think about things like paid search ads, um, Facebook ads, display ads, um, social posts for organic. So again, it can help with organic posting, um, but it's cool because it's more than just a free prompt where you can like with chat GPT, where you're just typing a, a prompt into a language learning model. It's got some tools that really help you to create better ad copy. So one of them is you can input your personas. So you can input a series of personas into any word and tell, and tell any word, you know, here are my target ICPs that I'm going after. You can input your brand voice so that it knows how you want to con you convey your message in terms of the tone of voice. You can add guidelines, which is super important in healthcare, right? Like don't say this, don't promise that. You can put all that in so that the AI doesn't come up with crazy things, right? Like guaranteed to make you better today, right? Uh, whoops. Um, and then you can also give it talking points. So stuff that you know has worked well in the past. Maybe you ran an offline campaign and you had a certain message that really resonated well and you got a really great response. You can add that to any word as a talking point, which it will then pick up and use um, in, in when it's generating copy. The other thing that it does really well is it will plug into your, your digital channels so you can pipe your AdWords data in, you can pipe your meta ads data in, and it will look at click-through rates, it will look at engagement rates, and it will figure out what works, right? So then it's iterating off stuff that already works. It's looking at historical performance and it's factoring that into the generation. Um, it's also doing that on similar brands. So, you know, if you're Talkspace and you're using this and maybe BetterHelp's using it, it knows, it knows what's working for BetterHelp and it can say, okay, this is likely to perform well because we see this perform well on like brands. And if you, as you guys can see from this screenshot here, I know it's pretty small, but when you look at a specific asset, it will tell you how well it resonates with, e with each of your personas, whether it's a general neutral, neutral tone of voice, whether it's more of a female neutral tone of voice, male neutral, uh, what age groups it, it thinks it will this will appeal to in terms of the language that's being used, right? So maybe if you're talking to 65 plus, you're using more arcane language. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's pretty sophisticated in terms of what it allows you to do uh, and some of the tools that it has to help you create better, better output. So again, 
the better you set it up, the more time you spend with it, the better the output's gonna be. All right, this is another thing that I think is cool. We use Vertex, we use, you probably figure out by now that we use a series of different AI tools, but some of the things like a lot of great media people and a lot of great marketers tend to be more analytical than creative. And um, one thing that I've seen in the, you know, Alex likes to date me, like the, the 20 years that I've been in marketing is a lot of people shy away from copy, right? You have to really love writing and you have to love copy. And so for those more analytical folks, AI is great because what you can do is you can go to, to you know, Vertex or ChatGPT and you can write a prompt that says, generate a, you know, a marketing message that uses loss aversion or gain seeking or through the, through the lens of social proof. Um, you can use different marketing psychology techniques and it's going to generate different positioning based on those marketing psychology techniques. It's going to give you samples of those. And that's pretty cool for like you as an internal marketing team or you as an agency going to a client and saying, all right, I want to see if our patients resonate more with a gain-seeking message than with a loss aversion message or with a gain-seeking message versus a social proof message. Like what actually resonates with them? What actually gets them to take the next step? How should I position my service? And this is something that before you really had to put a lot of time and effort in and really think about. But now with the supercomputer, you just literally type the prompt and it will fire these out. And you could do seven different marketing psychology concepts at once and it's going to give you them. And then you've got three months worth of copy testing that you can do to cycle through these and figure out what resonates the most. So this is pretty sophisticated stuff that again, you're generating in a matter of minutes and you don't have to be Don Draper to figure this stuff out. What a good show. I wish we could have two martinis at lunch. What a shame. What do you mean wish? Um, Anyway, so <laughs> that's why we're so entertaining in these live streams. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Um, I'm watching all of that copy, um, all of that messaging <clears throat> on the previous slide, all of our engineers, devs, everybody that's like not great with messaging. Suddenly we're getting wonderfully crafted emails to their bosses and stuff. It's pretty funny to see some of these yeah, chats like to emails. I see. I'm like, you, you didn't used to fucking talk like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. The I've emoji never gave it away. Use I've never heard you use those three syllable words before. What's going on here? Um, okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna skip over this. The point of this slide, because we're kind of running out of time, is you may already have PPC automation tools or media automation tools that have AI built into them. We have a tool called Adalysis that we're piloting right now where you can generate whole, whole other RSAs that you can test against. It uses PPC best practices. It actually buckets the headlines into, into different categories that match best practices. Again, it's just another example of tools out there that allow you to really quickly generate copy that also follows best practices. And you may already have access to the stuff and not even realize it. So if you are using a tool like Analysis or Optimizer or any of these, um, make sure that you are taking advantage of, the, of their AI capabilities um, if you're not doing so already. I got it. All we right. have a hand, we got a hand raiser. Josh, do you have a question? As we get into ad performance, we have a few minutes. Oh. Josh, if you have anything, throw it in the chat. Uh, we're sorry to mess up your flow. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I mean, uh, I can keep talking and when when John's got his question in the chat, we can, we can circle back to that. Um, just real quick, you know, forecasting again, it's another thing that I think smaller teams um, or, you know, more potentially more, more uh, bandwidth strap teams struggle with. Um, a lot of folks are doing no forecasting or they're doing some simple manual regressions that they don't really trust at the moment. Uh, AI definitely helps to unlock some of those forecasting capabilities. You know, we went from doing, from using performance planner and doing uh, manual logarithmic regressions for our clients to leveraging uh, Google Vertex AI um, has a pretty cool forecasting solution, a pretty cool forecasting model, uh, which uses machine learning. And essentially we were able to train these models pretty quickly, um, you know, give it the right inputs. We can, you know, what's cool about it is you can put factors in like seasonality, you know, you put historical data in, but then you can also set different factors that might impact that forecast, like seasonality, uh, promotions, 
market trends, and it can take all that into account and then spit out a more accurate model in about 10 to 15 minutes. So once you've trained that and, and once you've trained the initial model, it's very easy to go back and quickly generate additional forecasts. You, you know, if, you, if you're forecasting for, for the next month or the next quarter, you're probably putting in different seasonality impacts, different factors that are going to influence that forecast, but it's very quickly to generate and get more accurate forecasts. And we actually have been testing this uh, over the last month. We did it for three clients. And what we were seeing is the logarithmic forecast that we were using, even when we had high confidence in that model, we were seeing maybe uh, margins of error between sort of nine and 10%. So still not bad, right? Like we were within 10% most of the time, but what we saw with this AI machine learning model is we were often getting in between sort of four and 6%. So you're essentially halving the margin of error. So you've got more confidence. And what we saw as well is, which is important when you're thinking about Especially if, especially if you're not a client that just spends flat every month, maybe you have seasonal budgets, or maybe you're a you know high growth P backed company that is trying to scale quickly. The machine learning approach was much better at predicting significant changes in budgets than our logarithmic forecast was. So if a client was spending two hundred thousand in April and then wanted to spend 400,000 in May, the machine learning model was much more effective at, at generating that outcome versus our logarithmic forecast because we'd never spent at 400,000 before. So you're just trusting the slope, but the accuracy gets less as you get away from the actual data points that you've, the spend levels that you've actually spent at before. So for clients who are looking to rapidly scale, this is something that you should potentially look at investing in because it's going to help you to make better decisions. You had one and, more, you had one more. So, yep. One more yeah. And then I think even beyond that, like the, the next level beyond that, right? Like that's kind of the, let me do some cool work in my, in my shed approach to forecasting with, with um, pretty off the shelf machine learning models. You can get really sophisticated in terms of MMM solutions. Um, this is a screenshot of an MMM solution that we leverage. Um, and it's AI has allowed MMM to go from, I get a report from a specialist agency once every three months or once every six months that says I'm over leveraging this channel. And by that point, it's already out of date to creating a platform that you can go into and do real time scenario building in and make adjustments on a daily basis. Right. And so you know, we can leverage this tool to reforecast every couple of weeks to get optimized investment levels based on the targets that we're trying to hit to understand if we're over-invested in a channel uh, or under-invested in a channel and how we should shift dollars around in the mix to generate more uh, bottom line, top line revenue. So very exciting times in terms of what AI has allowed us to do. Um, it's to, to Alex's point at the beginning, this is way beyond just, generating emails or or generating <laughs> good and, and steven's an old friend i can tell he just wrote his nice little comment chat gpt and all of this works in healthcare i know that says revenue and stuff but i've seen this with multi-site provider groups we're talking revenue it is pulling in revenue data but it's bookings data too like this is actual stuff rich all hipaa compliant like we're being recorded so maybe caveat most of what we discussed, HIPAA compliant, right? It can feed in because it's just going and scouring reviews and you're not inputting any actual patient data into yeah. these platforms, anonymized everything, like all good. Yeah. yeah, if you just have two seconds, I'll just go on to my, my memes. Let's end oh. here. HIPAA compliance, you should definitely think about, right? When you're using this stuff, make sure like with Vertex uh, and some of these other tools, I think that with, with OpenAI, there's ways to get BAAs in place with some Microsoft, um, oh, sorry, with the Microsoft, Microsoft AI. Um, Vertex, I would say is a good one because you can have a BAA that covers Cloud Console, which also covers Vertex, but be wary about putting patient information into AI and training models on patient information. If you're in doubt, get with your compliance team, get with your attorneys, make sure you know what you can and cannot do. 
A couple of other things that I will call out is AI can lie. AI is never going to tell you that it doesn't know the answer to something, right? It will make something up in the absence of, of not knowing. So be careful, especially when you're doing the Same thing we research. do as husbands. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> That's right. Be careful. And, and you can't look it in the eyes and know that it's lying to you either. So just be really careful, um, especially when you're doing user research, because... <laughs> You know, th there is that possibility. And then right. last last but not least, don't go out and fire everybody and just try and use AI because it is not always better. You know, you may need a professional copywriter. You still may need a data scientist. You can't just wholesale shift everything tomorrow. Um, so again, embrace it, use it correctly, but don't just pivot the entire operation to running off chat GPT because that would not yeah. work. Yeah, it's getting there. I think for all of us, the homework for 2024 is everybody start using three or more tools. Start using three tools in 2024 will be ahead of 90% of the marketers out there. Once this stuff starts evolving and getting better and better, we will get better along with it. But I just want everyone to break their fear of like, what can it do? Can I do it? Am I smart enough to do it? Everybody just start tinkering. We don't have a choice. Healthcare, marketing, we've got a lot of stuff going on with compliance and the legalities and compl that is not super fun and marketing is evolving super quick. We've owned this agency what now for 15 years and I've never seen it move faster than in the last six months. So guys, start using, start testing. Rich, great job putting this together. It's really cool to learn from you and see all the cool stuff that our team is doing. If anybody has questions, um, y'all have our emails because we probably spanned you 82 times to show up to this. Just reply to that brand team will send it to my set. Well, I can't answer anything, but Rich is the smart one. He will get with the team and answer. Yes, you'll be getting a copy. Thank you, Norman. Everybody, hope y'all enjoyed it. John, we'll get back to you on your questions. We have a log of the questions. We'll get back to anybody. And if you have any further questions or want to actually talk to our colleagues that are using this stuff, uh, feel free to ping us and we'll walk you through it. We also have plenty of clients that give us lots of tips and do a lot of this fun stuff themselves so I can plug you in with clients and they can actually show you the in-house way of doing things as well. This is a community. We love you all very much. Keep fighting the good fight. Let's keep connecting patients with care. And until next time, thank you, Rich. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Adios, amigos. Thanks, everyone. See you later.